Hello, everyone. This is Markus Schäfer here again from Bus Travel. And today we have a very nice topic to talk about in our live events. Today we're talking about how to attract your ideal client. And for that, we have Abdul Sakor with us again, the founder of marketingmentor.travel. Uh, welcome, Abdul. Hi, Marcus. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm really grateful to be here. Um, and it's to be a very interesting topic. And um, I really believe that it will be very beneficial for everyone. So, yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, thank you for being with us. I remember our last uh, interview we had here was very, very interesting, uh, very interesting topic as well. And so we have been, been chatting and thinking what could be interesting as well for all the travel professionals and uh, uh, the travel industry partners of uh, Bus Travel, for example, out there. So we came to this, uh, to this, um, this topic here, target group. What is it? But maybe uh, you would like to introduce yourself a bit, uh, who you are, what you do, where you are, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, so my name is uh, Abdul Sakur. Um, I'm originally from Portugal and I'm currently living in England, uh, in Leicester. So my background has been IT and business management. Uh, but I've worked mostly in, in finance uh, for 10 years. And then I did a transition. Uh, to tourism and then to digital marketing. Um, I've worked in tourism um, here in England for the past five years. Uh, it has been a great experience. Uh, I had uh, so much exposure with travel agencies, tour operators, DMCs, and I've been helping them to grow their business uh, through online training, um, through giving them uh, consulting uh, services, and yeah, helping helping them get more exposure online. So yes, um, this is what I've been doing the last years, and yeah. it has been a very interesting project and very interesting journey uh, till now. <laughs> I believe, I believe. So that shows already you know what you're talking about, <laughs> and this is always uh, very important to have somebody who really has the background to to tell uh, what is it all about. And uh, interesting for you, maybe as well, we will have a Q&A section uh, afterwards. Um, so I will ask the first question so you can uh, have your first information and afterwards you can just uh, get your questions answered by Abdul. Um, we just do that afterwards. So maybe you have your questions answered in between already. Who knows? So Abdul, <laughs> let's start. Sure. So we, we speak a lot about um, attracting ideal customers in, in general. So it's not only uh, in travel, but in, in all the other industries as well. Why should we care so much? And why is it so important? Sure. I mean, to attract your ideal customer, firstly, you need to know them very, very well. So well, so well, so well. I even sometimes use this metaphor that you should know so well the person like if it is your own partner, either it's your wife or husband, brother or sister, father or mother. Uh, because imagine, you know, you, it's St. Valentine's and you want to offer something to your partner. You know exactly how your partner thinks, uh, how she sees the world, her pricing mindsets. So everything... Uh, that actually explains and characterizes her, uh, describes her, it's information for you. It's valuable mm -hmm. information for you. And then whenever you have this information, it's more easy for you um, to target your customer. So it's the same example. Uh, you can use it in marketing as well because it's all about emotion. From, from the moment that you know the person, uh, you can actually convey the message of... Um, the right message to your to your right customer. So, for me, I think it's it's very very important that you know your customers uh, firstly very well. Uh, but I can just give you two examples. Imagine um, my father, for example, he wouldn't mind to pay an all season ticket to watch Manchester City games, and then he would stay overnight every time he goes to watch the game. Uh, but my sister, maybe she wants to go to Croatia, learn the language and become a tour operator, okay? But then you tell me, Abdul, this is crazy. I mean, Liverpool has already won the Premier League, so it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that's that's uh, what <laughs> <laughs> But uh, just to describe, we, ha we have here different situations, and these two people, or three people, represent three different target groups. 
So mm -hmm. it's very, very important that we understand their characteristics, um, their pain points, their decision drivers, and their motivations uh, in order to craft the right messaging and target, mm -hmm. targeting them uh, correctly. Then you can attract uh, the right customers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so in the end, um, what you say is that there are different people and they can uh, represent different target groups in the end and uh, that there are different ways to, to really target them, to really get through to them, right? Exactly, yes, definitely. Uh, let me just also give you two examples. Uh, for example, I have a best friend, he lives in a cold country and he wants to go for a holiday in a warm country, but he wants to do a solo travel. Okay, mm -hmm. so how would we target him? For example, um, I just wrote it down here. For him, we could just write in our, in our marketing materials. Have a great and quiet, warm holiday break in the best isolated place on the planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but my cousin, she lives in Africa, in a very hot country, and she wants to do holidays in a cold place with her family. So mm -hmm. it's a different target group. So how could we target her? We could say, for example, escape the hot drama of Corona and fancy some fantastic cooler holidays with your loved ones. So two different target groups, mm -hmm. two different messages. Uh, that's the main thing. We have to understand their motivations, why they are going for a cold place or a hot place and uh, what makes them feel good, actually. Mm -hmm. Whatever it makes them feel uh, good with themselves, it's what we have to try to understand and then target it, uh, target them uh, in the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that 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 could really work. That uh, sounds well logic. So, um, where do you find, for example, your ideal target group? I think this sure, is sure. Uh, important uh, for everybody uh, to know. Uh, definitely, um, you can find them after you understand customer behavior. So mm -hmm. you can start, for example, with your current database with your customers in terms of understanding their age, generation, stage of life, location, the language that they speak, their cultural preferences, their spending power, their habits, their pricing points, Understand, understanding who is the decision maker. This will help you identify your target group. For example, mm -hmm. let me just uh, tell you, um, I know some um, in my past experiences, uh, we met a lot of people from Africa, uh, so they were going to countries like Senegal, uh, Guinea-Bissau, Angola, um, uh, you know, m many other countries. And the majority, one of the factors um, that drives uh, will drive them to pay a little bit more uh, for their trip was the weight for the luggage. And even the airlines already understood that. So many airlines already have considered that, okay, we'll give them 46 kilos or even more uh, whenever we do this itinerary, okay? Because um, this uh, kind of uh, customer will see the value um, of uh, whenever they buy a ticket, they will see the value in that. That's why they, will, mm. they wouldn't mind to pay for it. But for example, if I'm, send, if I'm selling a ticket, an airline ticket, to a group that is going to do a city tour, maybe mm -hmm. they will value more the location of the hotel because they want to see the city and they want to be around that area. So it's uh, actually, it's, um, you can actually identify your customers after you understand these factors, then it's, it's, it's easier to, to, um, to see where they are. You can also actually find them through your digital channels. So you can use your Facebook page, your um, LinkedIn business page, Facebook business page as well, and see how many page impressions you have, how many likes, which content is being absorbed the most. That will give you some ideas and obviously the channel to target them afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's now think I have found my perfect target group. Yeah? This is exactly those that I want and that I have, have services for, for example. Um, but others might have had that, uh, this, this idea as well. So what is if the target group is already using a competitor? Yes, uh, that can happen a lot. And it happens a lot. Tourism is very, very competitive. But then uh, it's also a chance for you to study <coughs> how your competitor is approaching that ideal customer. Because if he is your ideal customer, maybe he's doing something different. Um, I'm not saying copy his strategy. You just 
you need to understand what he's doing different from you so that you can stand out and also be different. Because from the moment that you understand that, you can stand out, you can be different. Because uh, I see many companies, they are crafting in their marketing materials the right message and the right content, but to the wrong people. So mm. in the end, they are attracting the wrong customer and maybe they will uh, finalize the deal. They will do business with that uh, customer, uh, but there will be a lot of admin work and the margin will be very low. And you won't be ideally attracting your ideal customer. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very important to see uh, how you're crafting your message, how you are um, calling your customer to you, which wording you are using, uh, which strategies, the copywriting strategy you're using to attract to, to you. So I think this is one of the main drivers that can uh, differentiate you from uh, your competition. Okay. So I think at the moment uh, it's as well uh, in this situation uh, just uh, important to think about things like that in the end um, because most of us have the time at the moment to think about that uh, as hard as it sounds but you know you always have to do the best out of the situation you're in so thinking about that can i think uh, from my perspective and what we have been talking before already um, bring a massive value to your business uh, because yeah uh, maybe you have thought about target groups like 10 years ago but it changes you know uh, like 10 years before there had been no Instagram, for example, and so on. So, uh, so it's really important to always stay up to date. What would you say, right? Yes, definitely. Because from the moment that you know that things evolved and you're using different channels, it's also an opportunity for you to use that data analytics from different channels um, to target uh, that customer. Mm -hmm. um, for example, a customer might be more active on Facebook rather than, than LinkedIn or vice versa, then you just to have to understand how the channel works and how he is consuming the content on that specific uh, mm -hmm. channel so that you can target the, the exact way. You yeah. know, some people, for example, they like the visuals, so they, they, will, they would opt for Instagram. Um, maybe some people just, just like reading. Uh, you can use uh, platforms for blog, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use Medium, for example. Um, other people, they just like to listen. Okay. Mm. So you have to use those channels correctly, uh, from the moment that you know your customer. Mm. Okay. Um, thank you for that. And, uh, that brings me right to the next question. How can you bring value by crafting the right messaging that speaks the language of your audience? Yeah. So, uh, that also comes to, to the point that I was mentioning as well, uh, about knowing your um, not only your ideal customer, but also understanding five important things. Um, and this is very important because um, in, in the end of the day, we're all humans. We all have different multicultural experiences, uh, different ways of uh, growing up uh, in different places. So I think there are five main points and I will list them. The first thing is perception. So let's say there is um, um, a retired couple and they are interested in doing a, a holiday package in a cruise with all inclusive, mm. okay? Uh, they wouldn't mind to pay 10,000 euros, for example, for that package because they see value in that. But a younger couple, they wouldn't see value because they want to experience different things. Mm. But maybe they would pay the same amount of money to go for the same amount of days, but for a hotel, a resort, only with breakfast, but have all the tours included. Mm -hmm. Because they want to experience things, they want to do different things. So in terms of perception, it's, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that. Uh, the second thing is the hidden notion of common sense. Maybe common sense for me would be that I travel because it's natural for me, I need to uh, meet different people, mm. uh, meet uh, people from uh, different cultures, religions, um, backgrounds, um, and also learn the local language. Okay, for me, mm. it's common sense because I'm an international person. I've traveled so many times. So this could be uh, framed as 
um, a cultural traveler, okay? But mm -hmm. for me, because I'm a cultural travel, it makes sense for me, but it might not make sense for other people. So this is the second. And the third point, uh, I would say that is the sense of feeling at home. Um, we have to understand how our customer is feeling when he travels. For example, uh, if he's traveling by himself, or for example, if he's traveling with his brother or sister or any other relatives, maybe he has a sense of uh, feeling belonging mm -hmm. and sense of reminding him of his childhood. Um, this is very important because all these things are part of his personality, of his upbringing, of the way he grew. And this kind of information, if information is very valuable for us because then we can target them considering, considering all these aspects. Mm -hmm. um, the fourth thing is also to understand the lifestyle. I think the lifestyle of the person tells us a lot about his preferences of travel. So, you know, can be all kinds of silly things, clothes, type of watches, perfumes, haircut, mm -hmm. <laughs> can be anything that can describe him uh, and can be valuable information for us. For example, I remember uh, I had a friend, he used to go two hours from here just for a haircut, okay? And he used to spend the night there. You know, wow. he used to go there, enjoy, uh, and he used to do that every two months. So this is the kind of customer that I have to understand if I want to target him, right? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, if I'm just saying, okay, you can go to this place, stay there, enjoy a couple of drinks. But no, that's not the case. He has a mm -hmm. different expectation. He goes there for a few hours. He will stay the night because he wants to see the city or enjoy a little mm -hmm. bit uh, the nightlife. But this information is, is very valuable for us. Uh, mm -hmm. The next point that you have to consider as well is the pricing mindset. And the pricing mindset is very important when um, we are, for example, producing our advertising materials. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it wouldn't make sense if I write last deal discounts um, for someone that wants to buy a Ferrari or an Aston Martin or a penthouse mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. But for my loyal <laughs> business class travelers, mm -hmm. I will offer them an upgrade. So only this, the difference of these two wordings, discount and upgrade, can already originate as a different emotional trigger in mm -hmm. your customer. So if you know, that if you have the knowledge about the right wording to use, it can trick them to decide for your product or your service, and obviously um, uh, go go for the go, go for it. Because in the end, it's always about um, understanding uh, how to speak the language of, of your customer. Uh, in this case, we have a luxury uh, type of customer. Okay, so we have to target them with the right wording, and I think it's it's very very important. The last point I would say it's very important to use the right wording in your website. For example, imagine that I'm selling um, my services for three different types of customers. Let's say the first one is for luxury uh, cruise holidays. Uh, mm -hmm. Other one is for uh, luxury um, uh, fly travelers. And the third one would be honeymooners that go to Bali or Mauritius only. Okay, mm -hmm. I cannot have the same message across all the pages of my website. Each mm -hmm. page of the website has to resonate with the type of customer that I'm targeting to. So if we have this uh, sensitiveness about the type of customers that are seeing our materials, that are going to our website, that are going to our Facebook page, we have to consider what do they want to read and how we can target them in the right way. And I think in summary, it's all about um, knowing the person um, uh, at a personal level if you can, okay? Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's, it's about uh, understanding his consumer habits and how he thinks and how he does things. I think it's, it's, it's very important if you want to target that, that customer. And in mm -hmm. the end, it works. Uh, companies are doing that. They have specific uh, teams just to write content. 
uh, mm -hmm. for their website, for their um, sales letters, for their emails, newsletters. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it makes all the difference when you're doing a sale. And mainly nowadays that we're just talking now about remote selling. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't, you know, uh, before sales were being done face to face. Now it makes much more sense uh, if we're using the right messaging across all our digital channels. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. I think this is, is very important. I mean, having the, the right words uh, is not only for the one who's targeted, but as well, you, because it's all connected with each other. Uh, Google, for example. Yeah, we have been yes. talking about that in another, <laughs> in another webinar. Uh, have the right words that people search for and you'll be found on Google, for example. And exactly. um, another thing that I would uh, like to bring up uh, before we start our Q&A session. So, guys, if you have questions... Feel free, on the bottom line of uh, your screen, you will see this uh, little um, Q&A section, uh, this button, post your questions in there. Or if you want to talk uh, with us uh, live here, you can just raise your hand, you'll find that as well. And uh, you'll be live here online with us and talk to us, yeah? Okay, um, yeah, one, one thing I uh, wanted to bring up now um, to, to finish my interview here with you um, is maybe, um, in this situation, it's, it's very important to think about the target group itself because maybe, and this is something, of course, nobody can answer to that, but maybe you have an idea, um, you have to target other people. Yeah? Um, keeping in mind, for example, uh, people that usually do the, the mass tourism, like uh, 200 people uh, <laughs> quite next to each other, like, uh, like a fish, you know, um, in a sardine. Um, this, this will um, maybe not work anymore. So maybe you have to, to think about what target, what offers do I have and which target group could be interesting for, for that. To, uh, could you give maybe some advice for, for these thoughts that might be in the heads? Yeah, so in a group of 200 people, you mean like um, a group traveling, for example? Is that you? Yeah, group travel or really this, this mass tourism. Like, mass uh, tourism. you know, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm from Germany. We call it the, the, uh, the tourist bombers that go out yeah, so <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think um, uh, if you have uh, a group with the same aspirations and with same uh, common interests, um, it's easy to organize them in a way that first they know um, the health um, um, measures and, and things that they have to consider. Uh, mm -hmm. So social distancing, and uh, you wearing a mask and gloves. Uh, I think this is really, really important because mm. health, it's always in the first place. And yeah, I think uh, this, it this... will be uh, more and more, um, let's say, emphasized uh, because even if, if you organize a travel and you want to, to uh, separate them, um, mm -hmm. from a human perspective, it will be very difficult, but if they know that, for example, let's say a tour operator organizes uh, an itinerary, maybe he can split the groups. So mm -hmm. if you have 200 people, you can split them in five or 10 groups and organize them in the way that you can avoid having so much contact. Mm -hmm. So this could be an idea for, uh, to, uh, to, to avoid yeah. any kind of problems uh, with the health. Yeah. Um, in terms of targeting them, um, the right messaging has to be there. You, you, may, you need to give reassurances before you prepare your advertising materials mm -hmm. that they will be safe. Because it's 200 people, but look, we are taking care of this, this, and that. Okay? Groups will be split, mm -hmm. and we will be organized in, in this way. So that way, you, you are giving assurances to them. Mm -hmm. And also, it makes your life much more easier because they know that um, there is risks, uh, but there is also uh, things that are being taken care of. So, mm -hmm. and you can prevent uh, other situations. Yeah, and I think that would be one way. Maybe there will be many other ways. I've seen actually um, some uh, some uh, uh, some new innovations, like putting some helmets a few days ago. I think this is still mm -hmm. in study. It's like an innovation. Uh, they have actually some air conditioning in there. They have yeah. some uh, ventilation system. I don't know if it will work or not. <laughs> but uh, in the long run, maybe that's a reality that we will have to uh, face uh, on a daily basis yeah. because, you know, we want to take care of ourselves. So, yeah, of let's course. see. 
Of course, and I think it's it's a great thing to to show as well. We take care of you as well. I think this is something from uh, yeah uh, uh, that that people at the moment and this this is maybe interesting for the targeting as well. Um, they want to know I'm safe. Uh, they they want to see how do you take care. And when they see okay, you do that, yeah, you have your perfect client in there just by being honest and transparent. Yes, there is a risk. Exactly. On the other hand, we take care of that. We make you feel safe and the person will be just happy about it. This is what I, what I think. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah um, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Everyone wants to be safe. Everyone wants to be happy when they go for the holidays. They don't want to have any kinds of uh, headaches. It, it, I think it's, it has been a lot of time inside the house uh, already, mm. so they need a break as well. Um, the only thing, the, the main thing I would say is the, is the health, that mm. uh, everything has to be in place. And the own uh, operator or the travel organizer has to uh, consider that when mm. he organizes the package um, in terms of the timings, the separation of the groups, how we will uh, organize the communication, how it will be done. Uh, if he has everything explained from the beginning, I think mm. it will avoid many problems and yeah. it can provide a very good service uh, even if it is a group of 200 people. Okay, we have a question here uh, from Maya Papadopoulou um, and it's, a, it's an interesting one because I had that uh, already in my head as well um, and uh, well I think I know the answer already. Um, in that case the cost of trips will be very high. All the systems that you are described are not effective. Okay. Uh, which systems like? The, um, I believe the targeting. Uh, Maya, um, I think it's not 100% sure what you mean to give you the best answer. Um, would you like to talk to us and uh, ask the question right away? What do you think about that? You can just raise the hand and I can let you talk. We just want to give the right answers, you know? Yeah. And I think mostly this is an exercise. We can share ideas, brainstorm. You, Marcus, can yeah. also give your opinion uh, because it's 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 a new phase. Um, it will be tourism 2.0 uh, from now on. We we have to adjust to the new normal. Um, so things will change a lot. Um, if I may, in terms of prices, uh, at the moment uh, <laughs> uh, it's is a bit tricky because. Um, to recover from this stage, I think there will be a lot of uh, deals, discounts. Um, hmm. But on the other hand, the hotels, the MCs, they also have to compensate for their losses. Uh, but in order to recover from this stage of not having any tourism at all, I think there will be some incentives and encouragements uh, for people to go back to, uh, to, to do the travel that they used to do before. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully, let's see. Uh, <coughs> I, I, I don't have a hundred percent correct answer, but at least of course not. <laughs> that's, the, that's the trend that I see. For example, I see already uh, some um, uh, potential customers or so some prospects already asking for uh, quotations for end of this year uh, mm -hmm. to go to X or Y country, um, yeah. and I see airlines already off the possibility to pay by installments uh, even if you want mm -hmm. to go the next year so that's already a good thing you can pay a deposit 50 or 100 euros uh, for your next uh, year trip and it's already an incentive even if you don't have assurance at the moment when it will be but at least you can um, fix that price um, with, a, with an installment and at the, at the beginning I think that will be the main trend. People mm. need to travel and airline, it's, it's a win-win situation. People want to travel and the companies, they also want to recover. So they have to offer the conditions for people to travel. So mm. let's see how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, one more uh, message here from Giacomo about two operators. Do you think that having virus tests documented before their departure will help to increase selling of group trips? Okay, so there is a lot of conversation going on at the moment. Um, for example, there is this question about the um, immunity, immunity certificate. Mm. 
Mm. So the quarantine certificate, and we see already some countries, I've seen it in South Korea, they already have it. Uh, mm -hmm. They might do it digitally as well. Um, so from the moment that you have that certificate, um, the authorities of each country, they will be able to see if you have been tested or not. Mm -hmm. And at the arrival, it becomes the process much more easier. But then we still have to see if this is going to work or not, because the local authorities of the country where you are visiting, maybe they want to do a, a, double, a second test. So mm -hmm. we don't know still how it's, because at the moment, uh, we still don't have 100% information about the virus. So maybe it's hemi immune in Africa, because they say that with the heat, uh, mm. it's less likely that you can catch the virus. Um, but it's not 100% uh, scientific theory. So, mm. you know, it's a, it's a bit, a bit harsh uh, to say. But I would say if people start to travel, um, there has to be some conditions in place uh, to do the tests. Um, mm. That's, that's, uh, that's a no-brainer. I, th I think the same. I'm, I'm with you completely in that, uh, in that thoughts because, uh, well, <laughs> we will see all this, uh, how all of this will, will come up in the end. Uh, it's, uh, I think nobody knows the answers. Like uh, Jean-Marc in another interview said, if I knew that, I would write a book and be very, very rich. <laughs> so um, I think it's, uh, this is um, what you said earlier. It's, it's important to brainstorm at the moment, to, uh, to have our thoughts together, maybe to make plans together as well. Um, this is all things um, that, that can help us because um, this is, um, now I'm telling something uh, about us here again. Um, this is what, what we from Bus Travel want to do in the end. We want to bring people together. We want everybody to share their ideas uh, to find people they maybe never would have talked to before to to get new corporations to find new ways new solutions i'm so happy we have you with us here uh, because you bring so so much value information that really everybody can use and this is uh, i think very important as well to, to to be really near to the people to their needs and to the ideas what they should do what they can do because, well, we can be like a university and tell you, oh, it's, uh, imagine it would be like that. It's much more easier like you do that. And thanks for that to really tell, hey, this is practical. You can do that. Think about that. And I think this brings a lot of value in the end. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely. Yeah. And I see also that um, there are people from different countries uh, in, in the bus travel platform. So it's, it's important actually to listen uh, to each uh, opinion because each reality is different and mm -hmm. each company and each country, each tourism board, each destination, it's still getting their feet on the ground. So yeah. it's kind of a process and maybe some countries can learn with other countries and vice versa. And that's how things are, will go. Absolutely. Because based on the case studies of uh, X country, then maybe it will work in our country. You know, you never know maybe adjusting a little bit X or Y, mm -hmm. then it can work. And this is why we need to make these sessions more, much more yeah. often Absolutely. Uh, to, to get you know, to viable conclusions. Absolutely. For example, um, I, uh, if you ever get an email from me or a message on social media, people, uh, I like to get to know our members. And uh, this is what we all like. And I had so many interesting Think talks uh, and of course I take all this information with me I don't uh, keep them for, uh, for me um, I for example with, with Abdul uh, and all our other speakers we think about what value can we bring yeah and this is why we would like to talk to everybody uh, that is on the platform or wants to join to really know the needs uh, to see where are they struggling and can we get these information somewhere in one of these live webinars and I can say it again and uh, I really mean it from the bottom of my heart I'm so happy we have Abdul with us here because he's always open to talk and uh, whenever you have questions because I see no more questions on here I think we answered them all and if not let us know um, we will have other webinars here um, let us know what topic you would be interested in yeah specifically really go into details I want to know how I can do that best or why I maybe should not do that who knows um, we are open for everything and uh, we discuss afterwards about uh, the, the next uh, date and uh, our next appointment here to go live and uh, 
we will bring your questions in, of course, in, in this content because we do that for you. Yeah, we want to bring you value. So this has been a little more than I usually wanted to tell, but uh, <laughs> I hope everybody got what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, and before finalize, we, I would just like to um, disclose three informations, uh, if I may. Of course, I'm happy about any information that comes from your side. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first one uh, is in regards to, to our health um, and this is coming from a millennial prophetic ancient tradition uh, there is a natural ingredient very popular in the Middle East that has the properties to prevent every illness and this is being used for 14 centuries from generation to generation and it is even said that it's very effective uh, to prevent coronavirus so I thought I'm going to give uh, to talk today, so why not take this chance to share this as well? Um, I have this. It's called black seed, black seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you can say it kalonji or budur soda in Arabic. It's very very effective. You take one teaspoon or two a day uh, with water, and it will help you, uh, you know, to prevent all kinds of diseases. Uh, in this stage that we see. Uh, people's health uh, in risk uh, scrutinized. So I think it's uh, it's uh, I think it would be good if people would take this uh, on a regular basis. Um, the second thing is that uh, it's good to understand now that everyone is at home to see which kind of media content people are consuming um, during the during the lockdown. <coughs> so I would invite everyone uh, to go to my blog. Uh, on www.marketingmentor.travel and I've also wrote some articles about ways that you can uh, generate some um, stream of income uh, while you're at home and I've actually seen very creative tour operators turning their business into online experiences so I really wow. invite you to, to see that um, it, it's, it has been uh, very eye-opening for me uh, to see how people can be so creative. So I really, really suggest you do that. Um, and the third thing, uh, and this uh, obviously people will love it as well, is that you can advertise your, um, your company for free. Um, if you send me just a blog article with everything th that you are doing at the moment to manage your business and how you are preparing for the future. Because just like Marcus has mentioned, this has been a very good opportunity for us to discuss ideas. So I think it's important if we also say what we are doing from our side so that other people can get benefit from that as well. Mm -hmm. I think it will be very, very important. And then your blog article will be featured on different digital channels. I have uh, almost 4,000 contacts on LinkedIn. I have an email database. This will be shared across all of the channels. And obviously it will be expo exposure for your company as well. So this is free advertising, this is an offer that I'm doing, and I really hope that everyone takes advantage of this because it will be very, very good for, for everyone. Feel, everyone. <laughs> feel free to post on, uh, on our news feed as well. <laughs> so yeah, sure, everybody we'll can participate yeah. from that. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> but I see we have one more question just before we close here. Uh, do you think uh, people would start to travel this year or we should start concentrating and encouraging clients to travel in 2021? A good question. Um, do you have an answer? Uh, it's not easy. Um, but what I see that the trend uh, might come to happen uh, throughout the year is that um, some companies are, some tour companies and some travel companies, even travel agencies, they are encouraging local tourism. Mm -hmm. So if you can have the chance to sell a tour, a local tour, um, maybe you can sell the hotel, maybe you can sell the transfer, maybe you can sell uh, a tour, a local experience, uh, a visit to an escape room, uh, mm -hmm. a visit to a castle, okay? Um, th this kind of short experiences on the local level, they might, uh, they might happen because firstly, no one wants to risk to go in a, in a flight where you don't have all these uh, health measures in place. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you have, uh, you have to consider that you'll be there for two hours, three hours, or maybe 10 hours. So all of these, you have to think really, really well if you want to do this. But I don't think that 
after this lockdown of so many weeks and months in some countries that people will stay and not go for even if it is just for a long weekend they will go somewhere for sure yeah. but uh, i would maybe focus a little bit in offering some local experiences than international uh, traveling mm. Yeah, I think, well, um, what I can say from, from my experience here, for example, I just read something yesterday evening, an article, and uh, I, as you know, uh, I'm living here uh, on, on Gran Canaria, Spain, and uh, it, it's so great to see that the, the clients of bars, restaurants, and hotels, uh, or bungalows, for example, already contact those facilities to, to ask, hey, are you still there? Whenever we are allowed to travel, we will come. I think this is uh, something, <laughs> something about, about the branding as well. Like, hey, we are there yeah. for you. Um, so they are, well, they are waiting at home to be able to travel again. So um, I think this is only the, we always go there every year and we don't want to miss it. But these people are yeah. there as well. So I think uh, for those, it will be the first ones who might travel. Um, and uh, the others will just follow because it will start again. But as you already said, nobody knows when all of this ends here. Um, even when the quarantine is over, uh, are the borders open? Will people come in again? Uh, are they allowed from other countries to get in or to get out of the country? You never know, so that's a good question. Um, a question again. Maya is back again here. Um, nice. She wrote, it will depend on a restriction that countries will have as most of, con of the countries are um, advertised domestic travel. This is my opinion. The majority of the tour operators and, uh, are uh, advertising from September. So yeah. Uh, short flights, yeah. car travel will take place. Yeah, I think that's uh, uh, more or less what, what, we, uh, what we said as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the right question at the moment to uh, the right answer to, uh, to the question is, it depends. Yeah. It's a horrible answer, I know that. But in the end, nobody is a fortune teller. You know, we will see how yeah. that comes. We have to wait for it. Be prepared. In my opinion, uh, I would uh, try to be prepared um, to, uh, to welcome the, the, the next uh, visitors. But if they will come, who can tell you? Yeah? I think it will take till September. I think from my perspective, what I heard here on, on our island as well is um, realistic, maybe. Maybe not the full, like, hey, it's just like, like it always is. Um, but to start again. It's still time till then. Maybe it happens earlier. Who knows? Uh, it's all about uh, what the, the guys up there tell us what to do. And uh, in, in each country, of course, it's different. But be prepared. Um, use the time you have at the moment. Um, do your target groups. Really work on them. Really try to be that person, like think what is that, what, what this person really needs, how is that person, and uh, prepare everything for the time after. Yeah, yeah, the, definitely. I would, I would say the same thing, yes. Uh, start to identify uh, the customer habits uh, at the moment, the, the consumer behaviors, because uh, now everyone's online consuming content. Um, there is a group on Facebook, which is called Holiday uh, Recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, if you join there, you can see some examples of people doing inquiries. Uh, what cool. will the weather look like in December? Uh, what the price will look like for January next year? So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's small, small examples, but you can see that people are actually planning in the long run because yeah. they know that it won't happen so fast. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, but the good thing is that at least they are not giving up travel. That's a good thing. And when things involve uh, in terms of uh, restrictions and travel bans, then mm. maybe there will be more demand and things will get better for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure as well. So uh, this is a very good, good word to the end. <laughs> Let's not give up <laughs> travel. Uh, I mean, this is why we do that jobs. Uh, this is why we are here. And this is why we all fight together to get through all, all of these uh, situations that we are in at the moment. So, Correct, yeah. It seems no more questions. Okay. Abdul, <laughs> thanks a lot for your time. It was a pleasure, like always, uh, when, we, when we got to talk to, uh, to each other. Um, have been uh, really great. And I think 
we will have a chat later on as well and think about some more interesting um, meetups here uh, to talk sure. about things. If you have any questions, if you would like to mention a topic that we should talk about, please feel free to do so. We are always happy to answer all your questions. Maybe this will be the next big topic that really saves the world. Who knows? Let us know. Let's try it out. Yeah, sure. Up Thank you very it. much, Marcus. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> Likewise. Have, Have a great day and stay safe for everyone. Too, yeah. Safe.